darcela duro, duro, duro. Capra ignorante. Hello guys and welcome back to the 30th episode of Italian Politician of the Week. I am Ipernik and I make weekly videos on Italian history and politics in English. Last time we talked about Romano Prodi, the goofy prime minister who kicked Berlusconi's ass twice. There I also said that it was the 28th episode rather than the 29th, so I want to announce that I'm sorry but I never said I was good at math. Today we're talking about Maria Elena Boschi, former minister of constitution reforms and parliamentary relations and undersecretary to the presidency of the Council of Ministers. Before I begin, I want to remind you that I have a Discord channel. I haven't mentioned it in a while, so be sure to join. The community is very lively, but we haven't had many new members lately, so be sure to join. Bosky is one of those politicians that are made interesting by the media. Her father used to be part of the leading council of the Etruria Bank, one of the biggest banks in Thailand. Tuscany, and for that reason, ever since she began her political career, everybody made sure to have a close high on her, just in case she passed laws or encouraged things uh, that would help her family in any way whatsoever. Has she done any of that yet? Let's find out. Boschi was born in 1981. She comes from a long line of wealthy farmers in the province of Arezzo, Tuscany. They grow wine mostly, but as I said previously, her dad is also a banker. Her mom, on the other hand, was in the city council of La Terina, the small town where her family lives. Maria Boschi graduated in law in Florence in the early 2000s and was a practicing lawyer until she got into politics in 2008. Her first experience was at the Democratic Party primaries to become mayor of Florence. Just like in the US, the Italian Democratic Party has formal elections where they select official party candidates whenever there is a mayor or governor to elect. At the time, she was the spokesman of the committees in support of the candidacy of Michele Ventura, a close collaborator of Massimo D'Alema. However, Ventura didn't win the primaries. The winner was a certain Matteo Renzi, a young young and ambitious lawyer who will become prime minister just six years later. If I had to give credit to Boschi for one thing, I would give her props for her foresight, because she became a close collaborator to Renzi shortly after, and thanks to that, she got a seat in parliament basically handed to her in 2013. By that point, she had become widely recognized as Renzi's closest ally, his left hand in a way. Usually a person like that wouldn't really be taking that much in consideration, but Bosky had something that others didn't. And I'm not just talking about her looks. She had very different ideas from the rest of the Democratic Party. Oh, this reminds me. Let's have a look at their political compass. Now, hold on to something, because this one is going to be a wild ride. So, she is very liberal when it comes to social issues, but when it comes to economic stances, she is very right-wing, and it kind of makes sense due to her background, but at the same time, we are entering millionaire levels of libertarianism. Whenever I think of neoliberalism in Italy, I think of Boschi. Between 2013 and 2018, she covered some of the highest charges of government despite being very young. However, when it comes to the quality, really there isn't nothing significantly bad to say, just a lot of rumors. Bosky's biggest contribution is the Bosky reform that she made alongside Renzi while she was Minister of Constitutional Reform. The reform was basically a way to change the functions and seat distribution of the Senate, which to this day has little to no difference to the Chamber of Deputies. This reform didn't pass with a two-third majority in parliament, so they made it into a referendum, which was an absolute bomb. If it actually passed, today Italy would be an asymmetrical bicameral democracy, which could actually affect its stability positively. However, it didn't pass, probably because Renzi was very unpopular at the time and parties uh, told people to vote against it to spite him. If you will allow me, let me introduce you to my political theory that I like to call the Carfagna phenomenon. 
named after the politician Mara Carfagna, who we covered last month. The Carfagna phenomenon is when a politician gets a lot of attention by the media for his or her looks alone. This usually leads to, to journalists objectifying the subject or even discrediting its efforts and merits by just implying that their success is entirely owed to their looks or something derived from that. Bosky is another victim of the phenomena in my opinion, but there is a lot more than that. Bosky is hot and has rich parents, therefore she must be a crook disguised as an eye candy. That's what many Italians thought at the time and still do. The party who pushed for this narrative was without a doubt the Five Star Movement, who are always the first to fight for social justice until one of theirs actually gets in trouble with the law. Now I bet you guys want to know if she really is a crook and to that I say actually you know what let's have a look at the evidence first. In 2015, while Bosky was minister, the Renzi cabinet passed a decree that would have saved four Italian banks from bankruptcy. One of these was Banca Etruria. Due to Bosky's obvious connections to the bank, the Five Star Movement opened a motion of no confidence against her, implying that she had something to do with the decree and that there was a conflict of interest. The motion didn't pass because there was no evidence of it being the case. Italy's antitrust agency has stated several times that there is no proof of her involvement and uh, other than a few vague meetings there is no concrete engagement of Elena Bosky in the reform nor in the other banks business for that matter. Again she was the minister of constitutional reform she was in no way involved into such a decree regarding economics and finance. It was just not their jurisdiction. This didn't stop journalist Marco Travaglio from writing a bunch of bullshit about her. That being said though her father is not not any kind of angel. In fact, he was removed from his position some years ago and currently doesn't work in banking anymore. Bosky has tried her best to detach completely from the business of the rest of her family, but sadly, once you step on some shit, it takes a while before the smell wears off. The media also loves to overblow whatever she does. I will give you an example. When Minister of Economics Federica Guidi was caught moving some public funds onto his partner's business in Basilicata that extracts natural gases, Bosky was briefly mentioned in a phone call between the two, where the minister told their boyfriend that Bosky would agree with the proposition of an amendment. I'm not sure what that means, but that's kinda... wait, what's the word for it? Now, what should I say about Bosky at the end of the day though? Look, it's very complicated, I can't give you a definite answer. While researching for this video, I, I came upon two sides of the same coin. Bosky is either a very smart yet sketchy woman who excels in covering up her misdeeds before playing dumb when asked about it either on the news or on TV. Or, and this is the side I feel more comfortable with, she is just some normal politician who is unlikely enough to be the obsession of some journalist or other public figures who need something to be angry about and use whatever she does as a tool to make her look worse. She is shady, but I think it's just her way of distancing herself from the dirt surrounding her name. And honestly, I don't think it's as bad as some people think. Usually I just tell you guys my opinion before calling it quits, but since the ultimate goal of this series is to encourage you guys to formulate or revalue your own take on Italian politics, I want to showcase what other politicians think about Bosky. If you guys like this, I can do this more often in future episodes. Let's start off with Alfonso Bonafede. Remember him? Yeah, I made a video about him last year. Good times. I definitely went too easy on him back then, but anyway, this was what Bonafede said about Bosky when she was Minister of Parliamentary Relations. I don't have an issue with Minister Bosky leaving the 
Chamber of Deputies. For me the problem begins when she enters the chamber in the first place, because the Minister for Relations with Parliament has her own way of practicing her public duties. All she does is come in, listen for 5 minutes and then read a statement which by now I imagine she has also learned by heart since she has repeated it so many times, then stops the debate and leaves. This is not the right way to look after relations with the Parliament, although I have to assume she has better relations to nurture, like the ones she has with the friends she sends amendments to. The next one is much shorter, both the quote and the author. Here's what Renato Brunetta has to say about Bosky. Poor Bosky, too much power and visibility for someone who has read and studied so little like her. Well, that's all for today. Remember to like and subscribe. I will see you next time.